everybody and welcome back to a new episode of the Mind and Muse Crafts podcast. Today it is Wednesday, Wednesday, September the 19th, and I try very hard to come back to you shortly after the last podcast because I wanted to be sure to be able to talk with you a couple of times before that big sackalong cow began at the end of September. So, I'm back. I am Caroline. I'm your host here today and every day that this podcast goes on air. And I am broadcasting, as always, from the western side of the island of Puerto Rico in the Caribbean. And it is what is unusual for me is that it is late in the afternoon. And so I don't know. I'm not too sure about how the lighting is going to go on here. I am going to record for a little bit. I'll take a look at it. If the lighting is okay, then I'll continue. If not, then, well, I guess we'll just leave this for another day. But hopefully, all will go well. So, I'm back here, first of all, to talk to you about the September Sakalong, which we've been talking about for the longest time, ever since January, probably. Uh, ever since January, Faye of the Crochet Circle podcast mentioned that she wanted to do a Sakalong during the year and at some point they decided the date would be in in September and specifically at the end of September beginning September 29th because that's the day when yarn daily big yarn festival in um, England is carried on and so they decided to get together on that day several podcasters including Claudia from the Crochet Luna podcast who's traveling from California uh, on a family trip but she's going to make a stop at Yarndale to meet up with a lot of the people that we only know virtually and so they decided to make that a bigger day by starting on that day the Sack Along 2018. Um, really we could say that you really wouldn't have to wait until that day to begin it's just the fun is starting a project on the same day that you know that maybe hundreds or who knows if we'll get to be thousands of people will be starting the a similar project around the globe because um if you look at the details that you can find on crochet circles ravelry page faye has posted the details the, the details of oh let's just say guidelines for this podcast, for this um, cal, and the guidelines state, you can go and see them, it's on her Ravelry group, but I want to just summarize here just in case, kind of motivate people to get involved. Um, we can allow whips, whips are allowed and whips are even encouraged and she really wants you, if you ever started a crochet sock and just put it aside because you were fed up, she really wants you to pick it up again and try with the help of those people that will be attending and servicing in the uh, Ravelry groups as um, consultants, let's say, can help you. People that just had, have had a little bit more experience can help you along and help you get that project finished. And so whips are allowed. Any type of sock can be made. It can be crochet, it can be knit, it can be woven, it can be sewn. It can be felted if that exists. I don't know if sewn socks or felted socks exist, but if that's your thing, if you would like to make a sock in uh, using that craft, they are all invited. They are all invited, and there will be one main chatter group for the thread, which will be held in Crochet Luna's Ravelry group. There will also be one main FO group. The one, the main FO thread will be held in the Craftinoon Treats group on her Ravelry page and there will be prizes in that group and there will also be prizes on the Instagram hashtag hashtag it's hashtag sockalong2018 or hashtag sockalongfo I'll write it at the bottom of the screen because of course I'll have to look it up to make sure that I'm giving you the right hashtag, but all of these details, all of them, can be found on the Ravelry page of the Crochet Circle podcast group, and so that you can reread them and make sure that everything that I'm saying here um, is correct. In addition to that um, chatter group, the main chatter group, where you can post your 
your chatter. You can ask questions to people who have lots of experience making so crochet socks. There will even be a, um, a consultant for the knitters if you're having troubles with your knitting, so knitting socks, knitted socks. Um, there will be a person also who has accepted, I can't remember the name, but it's all in the details. It's all in the details. And so any of those types of socks, you will have some extra help through people that have offered their talents um, and volunteered for the activity. Now, in addition, we were going to form a small chatter group, a secondary chatter group on the Crochet Cakes podcast Ravelry group. And I've already opened up a thread there. But that chatter is only for those of you who will be making the sock pattern that I posted. This uh, sock along has brought along, a lot, brought along a lot of challenges and uh, a lot of new experiences, especially particularly for me. I don't know about the rest, but particularly for me. I, um, ever since Faye talked about the sock along, we were, Elizabeth and I were very enthusiastic about it. Elizabeth, my younger daughter, who is the host of the Crochet Cakes podcast, if you're joining me for the first time. Um, well, she left and went off to live independently in February. And so during February, I decided that I was going to create a sock that would remind me of her. I called my socks the Always Socks, and we tested them and we corrected them and we edited them for months. And finally, the pattern is up on Ravelry and it is called My Sweet Socks. And if you go to Ravelry and you download that pattern, it is a free pattern, and you accept the challenge of making that pattern for this sock along, well then we have a separate chatter group for you in the Crochet Cakes podcast group. And so that thread is already open because the pattern was posted, I believe last week sometime, I actually posted two patterns, one for the miniature hooked sock that I showed you during the last podcast, and one for my sweet um, crochet socks that I've been showing you for months. And so they're up, they're published. We have already edited, I have already edited them, I think twice, because people have begun looking at them, reading them, starting to hook them up, and have found mistakes, uh, mistakes in, um, let's say, uh, the number of rounds that you should repeat, or suggestions for uh, improving the appearance of the final product. Well, I've taken it all into consideration, and I have already published edited notes for both of these patterns, and I think I'm due for one more edit on the My Sweet Socks. So if you already downloaded them, just go back and download them again. They continue to be free, and will be free for some time. So. Um, Yes, if you like that type of sock, if you would like to enjoy doing it, then please go in and pick up that pattern. It is also included in a, um, in case you don't want to do that sock, they have created a bundle for the Crochet Luna podcast on that page. If you look to your right, you'll see a little tab that says bundles. And there's a bundle for socks where they have included socks from different authors. Uh, my two socks are included in that bundle. There's also a, a free sock pattern from Tamara of um, Crafty Escapism. And there are many other socks, some free or some paid for, but they're all great beginner patterns. And there are some that are for, more, for the more experienced. So don't miss out on that. Go by and take a look. If only, if you're not even thinking about making a sock, but just go to see the different types of socks that people have been designing and creating and making with different patterns. So um, it's, an, it's exciting even if you're not making socks and you know it is a little bit contagious. You will look at them and you'll see them for a while and you'll end up thinking oh oh I think I could do that and it'll be a good thing. It'll be a good experience and it's always more fun to when you're hooking things or crafting things and knowing that other people are doing the same thing you are and at some point you'll have a chance to talk about that in real life, right? Virtual, but, but people will actually answer you back. So yeah, check that out. Check the Crochet Luna podcast so you can join the chatter group. Check the Crochet Luna podcast for the bundle of socks that has been published there. And still and yet, if you are a reader, 
if you are a person who is maybe shy to interact verbally with other people, even if it's virtually, but you do like to read, Mara of the craftyescapism.com blog has accepted the challenge of creating a blog hop. And if you don't know the term, a blog hop is simply a group of bloggers that get together and agree to write different articles, if you will, on a one subject. And so we've all chosen the subject of sock making and each one of us has uh, written up a post on some aspect of sock making. And yes, I say each one of us has because I was invited. I was invited to present a post for the blog hop. And so my blog up, uh, there are two posts already available on the blog hop. The first post went up September the 15th and it was by Tamara herself of Crafty Escapism on craftyescapism.com. Um, she posted, wrote about, ten, about tips for crochet sock making and they're very valuable tips if you've never made socks or even if you had, you should stop by there and read up on her tips because they are very helpful and even if you have made socks, I'm sure you'll read them and say, yeah, been there, done that, totally agree because they are, they are she's, she hit, right, she hit it on the head. She, she, she uh, published a very helpful, an informative post. We'll give that a chance to go by. I'm recording in the same spot as always, but since it's afternoon, there's and, and late in the afternoon, there's going to be a lot of noise um, in terms of well, trucks and cars and probably dogs in a little bit. So that's why, if you see, I am trying to speak a little faster and get this on its way. So anyway, back to the blog hop. The first post was posted by Tamara on the 15th, and she gives you good very good fundamental tips for sock making with crochet. The second blog hop, from there we jump to the blogcast, the, the second blog hop stop was written by Faye, but this time in her Knitted Hook It Craft It site, which is her online business. And on that post, she writes about yarn choice. And so if you're having trouble deciding out of all these yarns, what yarns should I choose to make my uh, crochet socks? What is the difference? Can I find non-wool yarns? Can I find wool uh, yarns that do not have any nylon or acrylic in them? Or what's the best type of yarn if, you're, if it's the first time that you are crocheting? What yarns to totally avoid? What well, all types of information on that could help you make your choice. And that will be a week before the actual um, Cal begins, so you'll have plenty of time to make your choices if you don't have any sock yarn in stash. The third, the third uh, hop on the sock, <laughs> this is getting hard to say, but the third stop of the blog hop is on my blog. My blog has since we last spoken, I guess we can say moved because it now has a different address because of the fact that I paid for a domain trying to get people to write a shorter, write a, a shorter uh, URL to reach the, the, the um, blog. So my domain is now Mind and Muse Crafts, crafts in plural, dot com. Mind and Muse Crafts dot com. You no longer have to add the extension dot Weebly because I've purchased my own domain. And on that uh, site, I will be publishing on the 29th, on the 29th, the day that the sock along takes off, I will be posting my article on knit versus crochet socks, truth and myths. So there are a lot of things that are, have been said about the comparison between knit socks and crochet socks, and some people have their favorites. Um, some people prefer knit, and believe it or not, some people do prefer crochet socks. And so in that article, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And that's on the, the third stop of the, sock, of the blog hop. <laughs> that's on September 29th. And since that weekend is Yarndale, this big yarn festival up in the UK, um, they decided, the organizers decided to celebrate two blog hops on Saturday the 29th. And on 30, on Sunday the 30th, Deanne of the Addy Day Designs, um, of just, yeah, Addy Day Designs, will be publishing a article on her blog that has to do with the anatomy of a sock. So 
if you are stuck, if you are worried that there's some aspect of the sock that you're going to get stuck and people have said it's so hard and I'm not going to be able to get through this, well, go and read up on the anatomy of a sock so you will lose that feel, overcome that fear, and be able to confront this make, which is such a fun make, making socks, since it doesn't really take that much time. Um, it's a light project. You can, it's so portable. You can carry it anywhere. It, is, it can be very addictive, and you will soon learn that well, maybe you like it. Maybe it's something else that you like to do on those odd times where you've got to sit in the car and wait to pick somebody up or sit in a doctor's office and wait to be attended or just meet up with somebody and wait until they arrive or just take a bus ride, a train ride, a subway. I mean, it's a good project to just carry along in your pocketbook. So go in and check out that blog also. I mean, after the 29th and the 30th, after that weekend where the, the uh, cow really takes off, there will be several other hops during the month of October, basically every every Saturday. And so there'll be a post on heels. There will be a post on color, how to choose your colors. There will be a post on customizing. There will be a post that compares toe up making socks to cuff down making socks. And so it's like an encyclopedia. It's like a magazine. It's like an online magazine of articles all dedicated to sock making. So if you're not excited already, I'm hoping that this description will help you get there. Um, you can read some of the blogs in addition to being written are also done as an audio cast. And I'm, you know, I'm really in tune to doing that. I think that would be a great thing for, um, uh, for some people who just like to listen to a blog on their way to work. I know I listen to tons of podcasts and audiobooks and blogs, audio blog. I actually those are podcasts, right? Because they're they're audio. And then I listen to I listen to um podcasts and I listen to vlogcasts because I don't look at them. Obviously, you can't look at a screen while you're driving, but some podcasts can be listened to because it's very there are very few moments the descriptions are so well done that there are actually a few moments where you actually have to look at the screen to follow along. So I listen to audiobooks and I listen to podcasts and I listen to vlogcasts. And so maybe, maybe that's something to look into. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's something that we that I should look into doing for my my uh, my blog also. So tune into that. Don't miss it. Don't miss the dates. Pretty soon you're going to be seeing posters, um, virtual posters, right? Um, printed on in different areas, posted to Instagram, posted to Facebook, posted to Ravelry, and so that um, you'll have all the information at your fingertips so you can make this for upcoming months more exciting than usual in your uh, crafting, in terms of your crafting, right? So I think I've said everything I wanted to say about the sock along. Let me just check my notes, please. Oh, one last thing that I wanted to mention is that one of the, the rules or the guidelines for the sock along is that you may also double dip. So if you find another um, cow that you would like to enter your project in, be it because you're using a specific type of yarn, for example, if you use a pumpkin theme yarn, you could go over to um, Opera Joe. She's Opera Joe on Instagram. Joanna is her name, and she is stitching the high notes on YouTube and um, and I think on Ravelry also. She's got a Ravelry group and they are doing a pumpkin mal where any make that is pumpkin related is allowed and they'll be having that for during the month of October. So if your socks are made with a yarn that is pumpkin related, you could go in and double dip there. You could also double dip into Alley of Little Drops of Wonderful podcast where she also has a Ravelry group it's called Little Drops of Wonderful, and she is hosting the Strictly 2018 Sock Along. And if you didn't read up on that or join in last year, the Strictly is a dance show that is shown in the UK. It is something like the US So You Wanna Dance or Dancing with the Stars programs that we have. And the idea is that every time an episode of Strictly goes on air, you pick up your project and during that half an hour or 45 minutes that the show runs, I don't really know how long it is, um, you crochet or knit on your sock. 
and you're only allowed to make it during the cat the uh, running of the episodes but she allows rule bending which means if you record the episode and watch it later on or re-watch it later on you could get extra time in or if you watch the american version of strictly may she would probably allow that to go in or maybe you can go to youtube like I'm planning on doing and you can watch the the strictly uh, segments that are posted to YouTube and watch them and rewatch them and rewatch them until you've crocheted a little bit on your sock is is a much longer cow this cow lasts until January I think the 9th because I guess that's when strictly is over definitely but there are a couple of moments during those months where she's going to stop and pick some um, prizes so they'll have prizes several times during the cycle along and so if you would like you can pick some type of sparkly shiny starry and uh, betsy of uh, betsy she's sam of betsy makes she is a um, podcaster a crocheter and she also dyes yarn and in her Etsy shop, she has several times had a yarn that she dyed specifically for that Strictly 2018. And it's a yellow yarn because Allie's favorite color is yellow, and it's got all kinds of sparkles on it to remind you of what goes on on stage on any dance dance program, any of these dance like reality shows, I guess you could call them, or competitions, I don't know. Whatever you want to call them, there's another chance to double dip. And if you can think of any other of the cows that are going on, because there are tons of them, and a way to fit your sock into that one, well, yes, by all means, double dip. Make more than one sock if you want to, and getting extra FOs. Remember, you can put a FO into the main chatter thread that is going to be hosted by Crafternoon Treats on the Crafternoon Treats Ravelry Group, or you can put it into, if you are making, if you are making my sweet socks pattern, then you've got a second chance to win a prize if you post your FO into uh, the crochet uh, group, the crochet Ravelry group, and uh, there'll be a try to thread if you need help interpreting the instructions or if you want to share a suggestion on how we can improve that that project and there will also be also be an fo thread where you can post your finished objects and we'll do a separate drawing of prizes for only my sock patterns out of a kind of a way to celebrate that i have um recently been experimenting that side of crafting so i did have something else to say about that didn't i well it's been something that we have it's been like building up inside for months and so it would be obviously that talking about the sock along would take up a big part of this episode but it's not the only thing it's not the only thing i wanted to share with you so continue with the idea of socks let me just mention that we have also wanted to join in on the excitement and kind of build up build up this um excitement for the sock along and so i teamed up with crochet cakes and Crochet Cakes created and designed a little sock, uh, sock bag for this sock along. In the sock bag, you can purchase with or without a three 30 gram balls of three colors of yarn so that you could make the sock pattern on your sock um, stand out, right? In a coordinating, contrasting colors that would stand it out from the rest of your sock color. So go over to Dainty by Crochet Cakes, which is her Etsy shop, and you can see them. They've already been posted. And um, so that's another way to participate. And even if you never finish your sock, you will always have a memory of this time of such excitement and um, such fraternity where so many people wanted to get involved, share their knowledge, and also just crochet next to a buddy, uh, even if it's just a virtual one. So you can go by that Dainty by Crochet Cakes shop and buy yourself a bag. And you still got time to get it before the sock along actually begins. So go over and check that one out. The first whip then that I want to share with you is a sock. When I was finishing up these patterns, I had made the sock many times. Clarissa had made the sock a couple of times, trying to get the pattern, you know, correct in all of its instructions. But we had both forgotten to take pictures. So when you're publishing a pattern, 
you can't only use words. And so, um, if you do want, let me just do a point apart, a separate point here for a second, because I just remembered. If you do have any problems making these socks, and you also go to that crochet bundle that I mentioned under uh, Crochet Luna's podcast, in there, there are also links to videos. There are some videos of a miniature, not a small sock. It's not as sm tiny as mine, as the one I made. It's a bit bigger, but it was actually a project created by Tamara of Crafty Escapism because she was teaching cro how to crochet socks in a class, a course that she was giving at a yarn shop. And there were videos that can help you through each stage of the process. Now, the, they do the toe, they do the foot, they do the heel, they do the leg, they do the cuff, and a smaller sock, but those, the, the uh, skills that you learn there are very easily applied to making a adult size sock or just a child size, just a sock that's bigger. You can, it's, you can take, you can carry on over those skills very easily. So there, there's another, there's, there's more help also through videos if you're interested. Okay. So I needed pictures. I needed pictures for my pattern. And so I had no choice but to crochet the sock once again. And I'm pretty sure that happens a lot when people are writing patterns. This is my next crochet sock that I've been working on. Okay, the yarn was gifted to me by Vivian of KCACY podcast when I made my trip to New Hampshire to meet up with her. She gifted me this yarn. I know it's a Knit Picks yarn. <laughs> I know it's Knit Picks, but that's all I know about it because I lost the band. I don't believe it because I know I was saving it, but I can't find it anywhere. So Vivian, if you ever watch this and you remember what colorway this was, you could tell me and I could share it with the group. But I, I do know it's Knit Picks and I do like the yarn a lot. It appears to be thin, but it's actually got a high twist to it. So when you crochet up with it, it you can feel it. It's not like some finger, um, finger weight yarns that you they just slip through your fingers and it's kind of hard to get your tension. This one has a nice plumpiness to it when you crochet it up without being excessively thick, without being excessively thick. So I am liking very much the way the sock is fitting at the moment. This is still a size medium, but you know how I try not to get second sock, second, second sock syndrome and I try to crochet up the second sock as I crochet the first one. So I started the second one, but when I started the second one, I was like, oh my goodness, I would really, I think out of all the options that I put on the pattern, I left off the option of doing a, a um, contrasting toe, heel, and cuff. And so I decided to do the second sock <laughs> with a contrasting toe. I guess just to show you that it can be done. And at the moment, it's got a contrasting heel. And at some point, this one will have a contrasting cuff, um, yeah, cuff at the end of the leg. And on this one, what I'm going to do so that they are actually a pair, I mean, obviously you can see that they are a pair because they're, the, the yarn is the same yarn, but in order to like make them more of a pair, I am going to, when I get to the part here, I'm already finished at the one and a half inches that you have to do on the leg. And so I'm going, I'm ready here to start the, the cupcake pattern. And that cupcake pattern I am going to make in this this color yarn, which of course I also know nothing about because I totally forgot to bring the ball band with me. It's in another room and I haven't brought it with me, but um, if I remember, I'll put it up here at the bottom or certainly I'll put it in the show notes. And if not, when they're done by the next episode, I will share with you um, what yarn that is. So that's a work in progress. That's something that I've been working on I kind of like had to work on it because I needed the pictures and then I just decided, well, because I thought, well, I really don't have to make a whole sock to get the pictures because I just need the different parts of the sock. But I decided, well, I'll make it completely and then um, I'll have another pair of socks. You know how the saying goes, you can never have too many socks. So 
They are not the last socks I will be crocheting before Christmas, I don't think, because I am thinking about joining Strictly 2018 with some sparkly yarn, and I am also thinking about crocheting Christmas socks. And so, yeah, a couple more socks install for me before, before the end of the year. I really can't believe that I took the... Uh, well, of course, I couldn't believe it because it's not true, right? This is um, the yarn that I am using for the contrast. The color name is Mauve, and it's got a color number 21. And if you couldn't read that, that's Valley Yarns. And I must say that I don't like it. 75% <laughs> Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon. But I have to say that I don't like it. It doesn't have any twist is the problem. It's a wonderful color. I love the way it coordinates with this Knit Picks. I think it looks great. But I don't like the fact that it doesn't have any twist. And when a yarn doesn't have twists and you're crocheting, you tend to split your yarn a lot. And so I really, I love the stitch um, definition. If I can tell you, I think this is the best, one of the best looking heels, these are short row heels, here, heels, but I think it's one of the best heels in crochet that I've made in a, in a while. And so I do like the stitch definition, but I don't like the fact that it doesn't have any twist to it. And it, um, it can become difficult to crochet. It's difficult to get speed because the fact that there's no twist is gonna, you're gonna be splitting your yarn and having to rip back. So, but I love the color. I do like that. So that is one of the things that I'm working on. Obviously, we're in the month of socks. It's almost October, so yeah, I've been working on that. And speaking of socks, I obviously have been, have continued, I don't know why obvious, but if it's not obvious, after what I spoke about on my last podcast, I have been working on my mini socks because I had told you the last time that I was planning on collaborating uh, with Melissa Dawn. Uh, she used to be Melissa Dawn Wool wool felt artist, wool artist, Melissa Dawn wool artist, and she is now Acorn Willow, I believe. Acorn Willow, I don't know if she's changed the name of her online site, but I do know that her Instagram name has changed. So, but anyway, she, uh, along with Crochet Cakes and Crochet Luna, Claudia and Elizabeth and I, were putting pieces together for an advent calendar, 12 days of Christmas, and these small, what are these, keychains. <laughs> Christmas themed keychains will be included in that advent calendar. Just a little surprise. Well, it's not a surprise anymore because I'm showing it to you, but you don't know which one you're gonna get. And also, uh, I don't know, every time I make them, they're different. So maybe yours will be a little different. I've been experimenting with different yarns. This, uh, I didn't have this one the last time. Okay, well, <laughs> it's a Christmas-themed yarn, and I'll put up at the bottom the, the uh, shop that I purchased it from. It's Merino Nylon 7525, so there's no news there. Uh, but I'll get the name for you and, all, and the information of the shop in case you're interested, okay? So I've been working on that a lot, and I've been working on it up to the extent I'm not going to say that I was getting tired of making them and seeing them. I just maybe wanted to see, is there something else? Because I had to make lots of them. And some of them were yeses and some of them were noes uh, while I was creating the pattern, making sure my stitches were going into the right place and making sure that um, some people say a sock without holes doesn't exist, but making sure that they were at least minimized and well, comparing yarns and whatnot. So it got to a point where I had a lot of extras that I wasn't going to include in the package that I'm gonna send Melissa, but that they were okay. There was nothing wrong with them. And so I decided on one of them, and Cora over here, if you haven't noticed already, is wearing the Treasure Island shawl that was presented on one of my previous uh, podcasts. 
And I decided to bring Cora in with the shawl because it's September, guys, and so many people were dying for summer to be over. I mean, here on the island, you can't be dying for summer to be over because it's summer all year round. But so many people seemed so fed up and were so happy and so glad for autumn to come that I just wanted to get into that spirit and, and kind of like design my background with some autumn colors into it. But I also brought Cora over because I wanted her to show off this which is my latest invention. I have created what I am calling sock jewelry. And so, yes, I took one of the socks, put some bling onto it, put it on a chain, and called it sock jewelry. And the only reason I'm not wearing it today is because, uh, well, it's not it's that close to Christmas. It's not close enough to Christmas. And though I am a Christmas all year long gal, I didn't want you guys to get sick of it because before it's actually close enough. So I decided I wasn't going to wear that yet, yet. Okay, so there's another invention you can see I'm pretty sure you can see this design on the actual pattern that has the uh, miniature sock uh, instructions. I think I included one, a shot of that, a close-up shot of that jewelry. If you're interested, you can go over and see that. Speaking of wearing it now, I decided not to wear that, but I am wearing a piece of crochet jewelry. I am wearing a piece of crochet jewelry. It is uh, this piece I created for, I'm pretty sure it was the uh, first podcast that I shared with my daughter, Clarissa Beth of Crochet Clay Cakes. Um, I did a series. I was invited to do a series on crochet jewelry during that podcast. And I'll put up a little link at the top of the screen. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be here or there. <laughs> but um, to that podcast, in case you want to see it, I showed off several. This has an I-cord, a crochet I-cord neckband and then it also has a bale, a crocheted bale and this is an actually a shell that I picked up at the beach over here over on one of our beaches and I added some bling to it and I crocheted, created a crochet bale for it so that I could hang it. The details of um, the, the where you can find instructions on how to create an I-cord and how to enclose your stones or shells or all are all on the show notes for that for the crochet cakes podcast that will I'll also link that here so back to my whips that was just like an interlude because showing you that necklace reminded me that I hadn't spoken about the one that I had on so what else have I been up to well you will remember that I mentioned as one of my Crochet in Your Dreams projects a that I would like to make a C2C blanket and I showed you a picture of the Alpaca Loves blanket that was designed by Jess of the Make and Do crew. And lo and behold, I do believe that a day or so after my last podcast, one night where I just could not sleep, I decided to pick up that blanket. And so let me share with you. It's, it's kind of hard to share while you're making it because of the fact that you've got so many um, balls or skeins of yarns connected at different points because you're changing colors that I'm afraid all that's going to get tangled. But I am going to give it a try. I don't know what to say. Okay. I will show it to you as best I can. Actually, it's going to be easier for me because of where they are to show it to you backwards. So, well, you if you know anything about C2C, you know that C2C is done diagonally. So you start at a point. I started at this point down here. And I actually included a picture of my beginning C2C on Instagram and then you continue to do diagonally so as I go diagonally 
Look who begins to appear. My alpaca has got legs. I think I've got an two legs. Right? And I am just beginning my third one over here. My third one is just showing up. So if you figure the space between the two legs, there's a fourth leg still missing, and then the same amount of gray background that I have over here, I should have on this side. I think this is going to be pretty big. I actually think it's going to be pretty big. This is the back side. This is the front, which looks, I'm pretty sure it looks the same, but they say there's a back side to it. And uh, I'm trying to mark the front side because the only way I can tell, well, once the llama is in, I'll be able to tell which is the front side because depending on the direction that the llama is facing, the llama faces to the left when the right side is showing. So, so that's why I know that, you know, I'm thinking this is the front because I think I've already begun his tail up here. So let me tell you that has been loads of fun. This is just, um, the gray in the background. I, though I am, I purchased the pattern and I'm following the instructions for it. I did not purchase all of the yarns that she recommends. She uses Vanna's Choice because they don't, they're not available on the island and I didn't want to have to, um, purchase them. I don't know why, <laughs> because I purchased everything else online, but anyway. Anyway, and then they did a sale. They did a sale of the pattern plus all the yarn to make it um, maybe a weekend ago. And it was a really good price. But anyway, I had already started it. So this is just a uh, red heart in charcoal color. And the black is just red heart in black. The white I showed you last week is that um, I didn't bring the broad, the band with me either. Uh, it's that... Um, soft buckle it's also a, i think it's a lion brand and it's a very fluffy furry yarn i don't know if you'll be able to appreciate uh, it's like made with um it's like little bunches of loops i would say on top of a, a principal the main thread and that gives it like this the um, texture of fur and also the idea that it's fur and so it, it's very appropriate it's very appropriate for this for this uh, for this llama for this I kept calling it a llama last week but the pattern is actually called alpaca so uh, it's an alpaca and um, I know the difference between alpaca and llama has something to do with size and there's probably more to the difference than that but I am ignorant and so I don't know and um, so I kept by mistake calling it llama in the last podcast. But I, the idea is, I'm very happy. I had never done C2C, and I, it was very easy to pick up. I did watch a couple of videos. Jess has some videos, and I also follow the crochet crowd, and they've got some great tutorials on C2C. And I was able to pick it up very quickly, and I think this is one of the most addictive stitches that I have ever practiced. I mean, you always want to do one more row always want to do one more and it is especially not that um, tiring you don't really get tired of it that quickly because of the fact that this is this has got a graph to it you know it's got colors are constantly changing and you have to seriously count and make sure you're doing the right number of counts because if not your picture is going to look a little bit messed up and believe me I have had to uh, pull back and frag back a couple of times because I've reached it a couple of rows down and realized that oh my foot has an extra toe or something like that and you know things really look out of place you can tell um, I've learned since to look at every single row as I move along so that I'm sure things are where they're supposed to be but I'm very happy with it and um, Rosina of the Zines and Rogers vlogcast is hosting a is hosting a C two C Cal for the month of October. It's going to run from October seventh. I know it's October seventh in six weeks, so about till mid mid November. She doesn't have an exact end date yet on the instructions that are in her Ravelry group um, for the podcast, but 
basically any C2C pattern. It doesn't have to be a blanket. It can be whatever one. And she's got a couple of patterns that have been published. And so, um, yes, that's a, another cow that I'm excited about because I'm really enjoying it. And even though I have started it, she's allowing whips as long as they're not more than 50% done. So um, I have gone on to try and work on other projects this week, waiting to be closer. Although I'd be a little scared to do that because I don't want to run out of time. I have, I've only made one quilt in all my crocheting history. And um, I did it in a couple of months because I was very motivated. I wanted to get that done as a gift, Christmas gift for my older daughter who was visiting during Christmas. And so I, I really, I put myself on a daily schedule and every day I was creating a certain amount of granny squares and joining them together every so often and hiding all the threads every so often so that I could get it done on my time schedule. But that was years ago and so I don't want to not finish this. I don't want to put it down. And so that's why I'm glad there's a cow, there's a group where you can be motivated to chat and other people um, will motivate you to continue and to finish your projects. So that's something that I'm happy to be working on at the moment. In the meantime, I am considering picking up my knit shawl again, that my Edinburgh shawl, the, the impressionist shawl created by Helen Stewart. I, I didn't give up on it, but I was bummed down by the fact that there were so many stitches and it was knitting and knitting for me is slow and well other things got in the way but now that I've finished um, a couple of projects my pattern is done it's been published crochet and socks is so it's like second nature for me now so even though I'm joining the cow that should not that would not um, be a burden for me and so I'm thinking that I have time now to pick up that knit pattern and continue on it. I have no idea where I left off, but um, Helen Stewart, if you've never looked at her patterns, the reason why even beginners like me can be successful at making them is because she publishes her patterns line by line. So she's got a big old table with every single line, every single stitch on every single line. And so it, um, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to pick it up. I'm hoping that I'll be able to pick it up quickly because I do want to finish that. There were special yarns put into that project and I just, I want to finish it before the new year begins. So I had wanted to finish it for the finish along. Craftinoon Treats is hosting a finish along until the end of the month, but you will notice that next week is the end of the month. So I doubt, I doubt Catherine that it's going to make it into that finish along. I'm sorry, but there was one other project that didn't make it into the finish along, and that project is over here, to my left. I did not have the nerve to put this on today because it is almost 5 o'clock in the afternoon and it's very hot, but I finished my Sherlock. This one is a scarf. Sherlock scarf. And ever since, it has been sitting on this mannequin because I wanted you to see that it's matchy matchy that I've got a hat and a scarf for my upcoming trip to New Hampshire. I'm going to take it off because I want you to be impressed with the length. First of all, there's a pom-pom border. I know that at one point I was talking about it and I said I was going to add fringe, but I wasn't a big thing for fringe because I feel that I just didn't want, I didn't want to put the fringe on it. So I did the crochet popcorn border, which is very common with blankets nowadays, but I thought it looked very nice on this scarf. And so it's nothing but, nothing fantastic. It's just, um, I'll get the, this one I do have the ball band for because I knew it was living in my um, Scotland bag. So appropriate for <clears throat> a detective that collaborated a lot all the time with Scotland Yard. And so it's Cascade Eco, showing you the back instead of the front. It's Peruvian Highland wool, 100% wool. No super wash in this one. And the colorway is 
9332 but I know if you actually go, I purchased this from Craftsy, if you actually go there, that 9332 translates into a color, into a name, which has something to do with blue. So this had 250 grams. Part of this I had used for that hat. So I purchased a second one because I knew I wouldn't have enough. And I believe what was left from the hat was 160 grams. And 160 grams, I have this leftover. I still had leftover. Bogged me down. I didn't want to have leftover. I was trying to use up all this wool because I've had it for a long time in my stash. But, and this is not really enough to make a hat. On its own, you could probably combine it with another color and make probably maybe a striped hat. Especially if you knit because knitting for some reason excuse me, is um, a little bit more efficient with yarn usage. So this is clover 4.5 millimeters. I have no idea if that's what was suggested. Um, and this is a 16 inch cable. That's what I used because I didn't have two straight needles. So I just used this one as straight needles and the yarn was long enough. US size seven if you do things by size. Um, it probably was the one suggested by the pattern because I'm, an, I'm not a great knitter, I'm a newbie knitter, and so um, I usually do what's suggested, except, except when they suggest to use for 38 stitches and I decided to do 55, but it made a real, a very thick, a very wide scarf which I can actually wrap around a couple of times and even tie it sorry like going off the screen there <laughs> or I can do like Sherlock does which is to fold it in half and then put it around my neck and put it through the loop and that's the way he always wears his shawl. This one is a little longer because his shawl is, I think it's made out of wool, it's made out of wool fabric but it's woven so it's a bit shorter, it just, just about makes it through his, his scarf in addition to the fact that he might have a thicker neck than I have. So, but I, I, um, I was just simply going for to make the scarf as long as I needed to make it so that I could do both of those, use the scarf both of those ways, either just throwing it down like this, because it can actually be used as a stole, because it is thick enough. It is thick enough to be used as a stole. There you go. Or as a scarf, or around the neck. This by, I didn't, I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is a crochet border. It's not knit, it's crochet. You know, after months of knitting on this, I would have to go back and stick in some crochet. And so there it is. It hasn't been blocked. It hasn't been blocked. But I am going to block it because it's got a lot of stretch to it and it's got a lot of bounce to it. And so I figure if I block it and stretch it, then it will just stick to one shape and it won't be as bouncy and as... Um, I don't know if that's a bad thing or not, but... But I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy that I finished it. And somebody mentioned to me that it looks very Sherlocky, and I didn't take that offensively. I think Sherlocky was what I was going for because it was a Sherlock um, scarf. And so I'm very glad. I look at it too, and I see BBC, obviously, BBC version of Sherlock. And so, yeah, that um, it makes me happy. It makes me happy. So, yay for finished objects. It's a. That is going into the finish along because I had started that for the Summer Romance Cal, so that was back in June, and it is now September, and I think that's a long time for a scarf, I don't know, um, but, uh, well, yes, people say that, you know, we shouldn't be all concerned about how much time something takes to make, we should be more concerned about the process, enjoying it, and creating out of strings and strands of yarn and string 
things that are beautiful, and so that should be more me, that should be more important than the time that it takes. So okay, with that in mind. I am happy to have it done still, and I still want to put it in the finish along because it still was a bit of a torture for me. And, um, but all is good. All is good because I was able to do that. So, this is what I had to share with you today. Um, again, my major purpose was to share my thoughts and, and uh, motivation, my excitement, um, the sock along, and hopefully get some of you to join in those of you that are doubtful, those of you that have never made a sock, have never heard of making a sock, of crocheting a sock specifically, um, would dare to do it along with me. And then um, we can put our finished objects together and share and, and uh, compare. So um, that done and that said, I just want to wish you all a very happy crafting week. And until we meet again, keep yourself safe, keep yourself happy, and keep crafting. Bye.